Hello everyone. My name is Taewoo Nam. I'm working for Courageous School of Governance, Songgyeongwon University, Korea. Welcome to the uh, second, uh, second module uh, titled Concept and Expectations of Data-Based Government. So this second module aims to help uh, understand the recently prevailing concept, so-called data-based government. And data-driven administration and policymaking innovates the operations and decision-making of public sector organizations. So this module emphasizes diverse perspectives on data-based government. This module has four objectives for studying. Uh, first one is, we will conceptualize data-based government. This is a working definition, not lexicographic uh, dictionary concept. So we need to make an effort to conceptualize data-based government. And second objective of this module is understanding the maturity of data-based government. There is a model for data-based government maturity. So we need to think about the data-based government in terms of maturity. And third objective is untangling uh, the concept, the data-based government, from the value perspective. And first, we will discuss expected effects. So aligning these four objectives, uh, this module has structured into the four sections. Basic concept of da data-based government is explored and maturity of data-based government will be also explored. And then value perspective is discussed. And finally, this model will conclude with expected effects. Okay, data-based government concept. What is data-based government? There are so many definitions of that, but these three things are, I think, are key components to define data-based government concept. First one is integrate the huge data, mountains of data that every agency and department in the government already have. So what is the, what is the very important keyword here? Data integration, integrate. And second thing, extracts intelligence from the data using advanced analytics. Yeah, intelligence extraction and advanced analytics, I think two keywords are important, but um, abbreviated. Intelligence is important keyword here. And third one, shares insights and coordinates actions across jurisdictional boundaries to stop threats and minimize damages. What is the keyword here? Insights. So remember three I, integration, intelligence, and insights. That's the key components of data-based government. Uh, there are four types of data analytics. So these four types give us how we can use data-based government. So when you call data-based government, actually you are naming data-based government in these one of the four ways. The first one is descriptive analytics. Descriptive analytics means it tells you what is and why. Description, descriptive. And second analytics is predictive. What if? It tells you what if. What will happen if something? And third type is geospatial analytics. How it fits, how it fits together. And prescriptive analytics. This is not descriptive, prescriptive. What to do? Data-driven government platform. Um, the data-driven governments have the platforms. And this is also kind of the data fabric. How the government use the data. 
take a close look at this uh, diagram. So operational data platform that can be departments, organization, or some localities or locations. And this picture shows only two data platforms, but actually there are much more. Operational data platforms, another operational data platform, they need to share the data. For example, uh, welfare domain, Ministry of Welfare, they have data platforms. Ministry of Construction, they have their own data platforms. Ministry of Defense, Ministry of Interior. So different ministries, have, they have their own data platforms. They need to share the data for the better value of public administration. The maturity model of data-based government. Why do we care about this model? Actually, uh, this comes from SAP in 2020 uh, paper, white paper. This is, I think this is the very first model to express maturity of data-based government. I think you are familiar with e-government concept, e-government maturity. United Nations, they uh, modeled e-government maturity or e-government readiness model. And there are uh, other e-government maturity models that scholars and the practical companies, they uh, uh, developed so far. This can be very similar step-by-step uh, -step model or stages of maturity model. And this is a kind of uh, prediction how data-based government will change, will innovate in the future, in the near future. Uh, there are five stages of maturity. First one is ad hoc and prepared, demonstrated, proven, intelligent. There are five maturity stages. Ad hoc. Ad hoc, ad hoc stage. There is no strategy, no funding, no executive sponsor for data-driven policy and practice. Maybe just vision or just ambition, but that's it. There is no concrete strategy for data-driven policy and administration. And second stage is prepared. One or more projects have been initiated to source and prepare, prepare data. Maybe prepared stage is just the starting point. And demonstrated strat uh, the status. Third stage is uh, the potential for data-driven policy and practice has been explored with a prototype. Demonstrated status, uh, set up a prototype, and proven stage. Data-driven techniques are embedded in internal business practices. And internally, there will be have business practice. And finally, intelligent status. This stage, data-driven techniques embedded in government policy making. And maturity is access, uh, assessed, evaluated according to the following six attributes. I think I already mentioned uh, very frequently strategy. So do we have a strategy? Do we have a bunch of data? Do we have a new technology? Do we have new different culture? Do we have big impact and influence? These are uh, kind of a criteria to assess how mature the database the government is. Strategy, is there a documented, funded, and endorsed strategy for data-driven policy and practice? To what extent is the agency or government strategy informed by data-driven insights? Data side, to what extent is data managed as a strategic asset? asset? Technology. To what extent does technology enable evidence-based decision-making? Culture. Is there executive level sponsorship and grassroots support for data-driven practice? And influence. Are routine business decisions evidence-based? Impact. To what extent do the data-driven insights prompt changes to government policy and business practices? These six are criteria. Using these six criteria, 
we have five uh, phases, five uh, stages of maturity. <clears throat> so this is a kind of uh, matrix to evaluate what status are you in. For example, ad hoc status, strategy level, data, technology, and culture, influence, impact. I will not uh, this. I will not mention all every cells. Uh, five multiply six thirty cells. I cannot explain all of each of that. But I will just roughly ad hoc and intelligent, very beginning and to the finally end. I will explain only two concepts. So ad hoc stage, strategy. Agency strategy does not consider data-driven policy and practice because there is no strategy. Data, data is not available, not unsuited. Technology, siloed system, impede longitudinal analysis, for example. Siloed technology. Ministry of Welfare, they have their own technology and they have own database. Other uh, siloed department cannot use and culturally, also cultural resistance to change, kind of bureaucratic inertia. In inference, decisions are based on well-intentioned gut instinct. So decisions are not really scientific. Gut instinct, kind of my hunch. Impact, government policy and business practices are unchanged. This is an ad hoc status. But finally, move to intelligence side. Government strategy is formulated based on data-driven insights. And data is continually enriched by data-driven process. And enterprise platform includes autonomic refinement of predictive models. In culture side, data-driven culture extends the government policy making. We have data-driven culture. And government policy is influenced by data-driven insights. An impact, policy is continuously reviewed and improved to optimize outcomes. So when your country applies data-driven government concept to your government, you need to think about or you can base this maturity model on your uh, practice. Government data value cycle. So the first stage is government will collect and generate data. There are a bunch of different data, for example, sensory data, requested data, published data, administrative data, bunch of data sets. And these data will be stored and secured and processed. So data storage and quality management and catalog and cleansing is very important actions in this stage. And then data will be shared, data will be curated, and data will be published. Finally, data will be used and reused. In this um, stage, sharing stage and using stage, these two stages will create public value from the data. Data-driven government generates public values these are uh, three processes are circulated. For example, um, when do you start? Uh, maybe evaluation and monitoring first. Evaluation and monitoring. So measuring impact, auditing decisions, monitoring performance. So retrospective data gathering activities are the basis for the new anticipation and planning activity and that cause anticipating and planning. For example, designing policy, anticipation change, forecasting, and imagining, uh, imagining uh, futures. And then this anticipation and planning will uh, impact delivery. The delivery is preceded by a data-driven design and planning stage. The delivery means implementing policy and delivering services, public services, responding to change. Value of government data, how government 
can create value from the data used. If governments can achieve an interoperable and connected landscape, the benefits include more efficiency, usability, and value-creating opportunities. So um, the interoperable and connected government data has created this kind of value. For example, improve resident experience of public services, increase administrative efficiency, and enable the data-driven policymaking and delivering the value of open data, and enhancing data protection and privacy, and reducing fraud, waste, and abuse. Data-based administration and public values can be categorized into these four uh, types. There are two criteria, two axes. The vertical, uh, vertical axis are data rich and data poor spectrum. And the horizontal axis means value neutral and value controversial. So there are four uh, types are created based on these uh, uh, typology, two by two matrix typology. So first one is value controversial and data rich, and value neutral and data rich, value neutral and data poor, and value controversial and data poor. The easiest thing is, easiest type is, data neutral and data rich, here. Value neutral means there is no value conflict. There is very uh, small possibility of value conflict. So it is very easy to do. And also data is rich. Very hard, hard one, uh, hard type is value controversial and data poor. This is very uh, hard to uh, extract the values from the case. How can we contribute to scientific administration? Scientific administration is based on the data-based policy, data-based policy making. Previously, um, before the big data age, people call evidence-informed policy. I think now, evidence-based policy is naturally moved to data-based policy. Evidence-based policy and data-based policy has three uh, status, input and throughput and output. In terms of a data-based policy, Input is reflection of real behaviors of other people. And throughput is conducting econometric analysis and applying algorithm to big data analytics. So input side and throughput side, it has been a, a similar or different between evidence informed policy and data-based policy. But final output is just the same delivers effective solutions with the minimum of bias in an irrationality. That is the fundamental output. And this is the goal of scientific administration. There are key areas of government data used. First one, uh, improving residents' experience. When accessing a public service, citizens and companies often need to provide data and documents that they have already shared. So for example, Estonia has this functionality. Uh, for example, the registration of a newborn child automatically leads to the provision of child care benefits with data from the tax registry determining how much money should be transferred to which bank account. Main effects, another main effect is administrative efficiency. So data use can increase administrative efficiency, operational efficiency. For example, uh, Germany fully integral, interoperable and connect the government data 
were estimated to produce 60% reduction in case processing time for key public services. Policy making also enhanced. For example, high quality and available data have a positive impact on policy making. For example, Denmark. Uh, the government used geodata to simulate flooding scenarios, enabling both better crisis management and improved long-term investment decisions. Open data. Government can deliver the value of open data. Uh, government can play a key role as data providers, both in, term, in form of low data and official st statistics helping to unlock $3 trillion open data opportunity for the private sector and civil society. Data protection and privacy is also enhanced. Interoperable and connected government data raise the specter of big brother government. However, the current management of government data also poses challenges in terms of data privacy. Citizens are often unable to see their personal data or know where these data are stored and when and why they are accessed. Error reduction is also a main effect, reducing fraud, reducing waste, and reducing abuse. For example, United States government agencies made an estimated $175 billion in improper payments in 2019. And these things can be reduced from the interoperable and connected government data. Interoperable and connected government data can help mitigate loss risk by reducing errors from manual inputs and inconsistent data across registers. There are some features, and based on those features, we can have some benefits. For example, real-time window into data wherever it is located in the government, and ask any question of the data, and bottom-up, continuous reporting against the policy objectives, and top-down monitoring of service and in initiative insights, and operational data platforms sharing data across departments. These features can make great benefits now for their citizens. This is a kind of uh, the diagram to show expected effects of the data-driven government. So data-driven government can influence agility. Agility means react in real time. And it can change data ownership and it can change accountability and transparency for the greater trust in public policy. And also, data-driven government will change collaboration with third parties. And also, it reduce costs. So, fundamentally contribute to operational delivery. This is the final slide of this module. Um, but data-driven government can have bright side and darker side, pros and cons. Good thing is, data analysis can support better informed decisions. Yeah. And data help citizen and consumers filter content and get information and products in a tailored way. And technologies such as augmented reality can be revolutionary in sectors such as education and health. And learning experience in classroom can be more interesting for students. New technology can uh, big impact. And open government initiative allow the use of public data to strengthen the checks and balances of elected officers. While these are bright side of data driven government, a little bit darker side is. Accountability 
and legitimate questions. And the more complex AI, the more difficult would be held, hold their decision accountable. And some countries can develop social control system to control people. And algorithms decide who gets a job interview or who should get a loan. But algorithm can discriminate people because we cannot uh, get deep into the algorithm inside. And social media data was used to spread fake news. This is also the darker side of data-driven uh, administration. Okay, it's time to summarize this module. Uh, we make an effort to conceptualize data-based government Database the government integrates big data existing across multiple agencies, and database the government extracts intelligence from data analytics, and database the government shares insights and coordinates actions across boundaries. And we will have very positive expectations from database the government, raising administrative efficiency, enhancing citizen experience, and enabling data-driven policymaking, and fostering scientific administration. Okay, thank you for your attention. Uh, I'll see you in the next module. Thank you. Bye-bye.